Day of Women and Girls in Science on the 22nd of December 2015. The General Assembly the UN adopted a resolution to establish an annual international day to recognize the critical role that women and girls play in science and technology communities. Now this year's theme is investment in women and girls in science for inclusive green growth. And somebody who's, uh, uh, that's close to her heart who's joining me now to unpack what all of this means uh, joins me now in studio is Ndoni Nkuno. Thanks very much indeed. Um, founder, member of um, Black Women in Science, uh, a scientist yourself. What does this day mean for you and what should it mean for the country and the continent? I think for as a, as a woman in science, it means that we are getting recognized, we're getting celebrated, we're getting acknowledged as women that are in science. And what it means for the country, I think it should highlight that there is a need for attention into the gaps and the leaking pipelines that we have in women in academia and women in the sciences. So let's examine this problem. Uh, I saw some UNESCO statistics that says that 30% or 33% of the researchers worldwide are women. That's a lot mm. in terms of um, the gap. 67% mm. then mm. must be men. Yes. Why are we in this situation? And what's it going to take to, to get to 50% at least? Mm. I think the number of factors that contribute to this lack of women in research and academia. I think as a woman, the structure of research and the career of academia, I don't think it's quite tolerable to the demands that we have as women in the industry. As a woman, you become a wife, you become a mother, you have to raise children, and the industry is so demanding and requires all your time in, the, in a full day. So how do you actually encourage a woman and how do you make sure that those trade-offs that she has to do every day between her career and her family life and her cultural responsibilities, how does she actually manage all of that? So I think once our policies and how we dis and how we draw in women into the industry is more designed for women and designed by women that's when we we'll actually start seeing a more interactive or maybe an increase in women participation so we're seeing a lot of women I entering law medicine and uh, you know accountancy why not so much in the sciences? Yeah. I think there's a stereotype, obviously, around science as a whole. It's a scary thing. When, when you say to a high school student, do maths core, it's just like, no, I don't <laughs> want to do that. You know, I'm going to fail instantly. And I think once you start dismantling the impact and the ability in taking these courses and these subjects, I think that's when they'll start doing it. So I think a lot of the problem is just confidence that we have. And the second problem would probably be exposure that they do not have in the sciences. So as women, you tend to get a lot of work on, on social, on nursing, on all of these industries, but you don't get much exposure in young women telling other young women about their environmental science degrees or their engineering mm -hmm. degrees. So I think there needs to be a generational mentor awareness as well as just confidence that we build amongst young women and emerging researchers and hence why I guess you you started black women in science mm. with this mentoring mm. but it's it's not just getting them interested mm. in science it's when you get into it mm. and start the job there's mm. still mentoring and help mm. that's required mm. yeah so I think a lot of the focus was on how do we get high school learners to get into the industry of science at varsity and then you see this huge gap in university that now there's Nobody's giving them attention on how do I then build my academic career? How do you become a, a, an associate professor, an A-rated scientist? And you, you're seeing this gap in knowledge and, and wisdom on what it means to be a woman in science and research and in academia. So there's definitely a need and there's a leaking pipeline and that's why there's such a few number of those that are in research. All right, so it's an interesting theme that uh, UNESCO, the, the UN has chosen for this year, inclusive growth, uh, green growth. Mm -hmm. Agriculture, food security are your thing. So this must be quite an important mm. area of science. Mm. Tell us a little bit about that journey and mm. how you see a woman's perspective changing the game here. Mm. So I think a lot in South Africa specifically, if you look into the land rights and you look into the cultural dynamics of land and agriculture, a lot of the women actually do the work on the ground but a very few women actually own that land and actually have ownership and rights to that land. So I think this is a very important theme in highlighting, especially in Africa, because women play a large role in making sure that there's food security, that there's organic 
farming and that you know their families are fed if you go to emakaya or you go to rural areas you'll see that ukoko is actually the one that's working on the ground so there is definitely a need to make more awareness and more empowerment to showing that women are the ones that are working on the ground all right we're running out of time but yeah. very quickly what's your best advice to young women who are watching this and saying i want to be like her mm. or women that are already in the game how they can ratchet up a little mm. bit more my advice is science communication we need to be able to communicate ourselves clearly and make sure that people understand us in that way then people will be more interested in what we have to say so I acknowledge and know how to communicate your science. Ndoni, thanks very Thank much indeed. So much. It's been a pleasure talking to you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. All right. Okay. So that's where we're going to leave it for the time being. Yeah, we need more women in science. Go for it. All right.